The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 233. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today, we actually have a returning guest. If you remember Hans Finzel, he was on uh, earlier, I believe it was episode 215, talking about uh, the top 10 mistakes leaders make. And he's back today talking about the power of passion in leadership. Lead with your heart, not just your head. Welcome back, Hans. And thank you for joining us once again on the Entrepreneur's Library. Oh, it's great to be with you, Wade. For those that didn't listen to episode 215, where you covered uh, your, your last, or not when well, your last, one of your last books, right? The top 10 mistakes leaders make. Um, will you reintroduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you personally? Yeah, by the way, that book, The Top 10 Mistakes Leaders Make, is uh, my most successful book. And that's one reason we covered it. It uh, it wasn't just recently published, but it's been a big seller for years. That's why we we did that. Hans Spenzel is my name. I have been in nonprofit leadership my whole career. And got interested in leadership when I worked for a terrible boss. <laughs> and then when I became the boss, I thought to myself, now, I don't want to screw up and I don't want to make life miserable like that man did to me. You know, leaders can stand in the way of your dreams and visions. So I began to study, uh, you know, what are, uh, what, are, what are the attributes and traits and skills of great leadership? And it sort of led me to do my doctorate in the field of leadership and start to write on leadership. And then uh, now I do this full time. I write and speak and coach and mentor leaders on um, how to be better leaders because history is the story of leaders, great leaders and terrible leaders who did awesome good and terrible harm. So uh, those your listeners, I know if they're in any kind of management or leadership, they probably want to take their skill to the next level. And that's really what I'm all about. Excellent. And Hans, how many books have you written so far? Uh, the one I'm going to talk about today is number nine. Number so nine. Ninth, yes. Okay, very good. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again for sharing that. And now let's jump right into this, this most recent book, The Power of Passion and Leadership. Lead with your heart, not just with your head. Uh, which was released back in January 2015. And Hans, we're going to move quickly, but our whole goal here today is to cover those top questions that uh, the future reader has. So the, the listener here today and the future reader has when they uh, before they dive into their next great read. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing The Power of Passion and Leadership? Well, there's a big blue heart on the cover of the book, and uh, it is available, by the way, a print, audio, and ebook. And uh, the reason it's got a big old heart on the cover is in my own journey. Uh, sometimes we leaders can, our hearts can grow cold, uh, grow cold, and we we lead from our heads and not our hearts. And that's what happened to me. Uh, I was in a position for 20 years as a nonprofit CEO of a big $35 million company. It was it was a great opportunity, a great experience. We were actually doing a lot of good around the world. But as the years went on, my heart kind of, kind of grew cold and I sort of lost the passion and I started just leading with my head. And like I, like I say in the book, my heart left the building. And it took me a while to come to grips with the fact that, and I'll talk about it when I talk about the details of the book, but to come to grips with the fact I needed to make a change because my my heart wasn't in it. And so, so I like to say people really need to lead uh, from their hearts, not just their heads. It really takes both. So that's what uh, inspired me to write this book, which is a small book, but it's my personal journey of following my heart. So one of the things that we talked about, Hans, last time was how many books come out every single month. And so, again, I reemphasize why this question is so important. That's what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, one thing about all my books, Wade, is that I'm an experienced practitioner. You know, it's funny how many people write books on leadership that have never led. And it's sort of classroom theory or they're a professor uh, you know, or they're a consultant. But I think what makes mine different is I write from the place of experience. I mean, I've been there. I've led. I've I've suffered the pain of leadership. And so I think that's what sets me apart. Um, I put the cookies on the lower shelf so everybody can understand, understand them and, and reach them. You know, I like to write very practical and uh, in a way that everybody can understand it. But it's really born out of real leadership experience. 
So Hans, how did you design this book to be read? Is this one that can be read from front to back uh, or did you design it to be read from front to back or can a person jump in and jump out as they need information? Uh, you really need to read it from front to back because I p- unpack, uh, it's only eight chapters and uh, they really build on each other because I sort of create the problem at the beginning, the problem that I was experiencing. And then I I talk about different solutions as you go through the book. So it needs to be read. It's only, uh, the print version is only uh, 80 pages. I'm looking at it here. It's actually 70, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's 70 73 pages is the print version uh, in Kindle format. Of course, they don't really have page numbers in Kindle. The audio book, I was telling you before we started the interview, you can listen to the audio version in an hour and 10 minutes. Mm. So it is meant to go from front to back. Excellent. And so now that we know a little bit of the background, the purpose of the book, let's take a deep dive into the content itself. So we take the next five to eight minutes and really roll out uh, what the future reader can expect to get out of your book. That sounds great. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of walk you through this story of these eight chapters. Chapter one is lead from your heart, not just your head. And it's really, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in the head and I've got a lot of education. I'm a big fan of getting education and, uh, you know, being intellectual and and knowledge is important part of leadership and, and leaders need to know their stuff. But I also make the point that uh, you've got to lead from your heart because really out of your heart flows life. And and I have found, you know, Wade and those of you who are listening, if you're inspired to follow somebody, uh, it's probably because their heart grips you. You see their heart. I think about Ronald Reagan, one of the most popular presidents in American history, and uh, people Uh, were inspired by his heart. He was a great communicator and you just knew what you saw is what you got. And that's uh, that's leading with your heart, not just your head. Uh, So chapter two is what I call do what you love and love what you do. I have, uh, I don't know if you all know this company, Life is Good. I'm sure you do. They have the baseball caps and the clothing, t-shirts, Life is Good. Well, their company motto is do what you like like what you do. And about five years ago, I was in the midst of my heavy responsibility and I was going on a walk one day and I had this life is good cap and I put the cap on and inside the cap is sewn, you know, when you put it on inside is sewn the words, do what you like, like what you do. And those words just pierced my heart. And I said to myself at that moment, I'm doing neither one. You know, I don't like what I do anymore. And I'm not doing what I really like. And that's when I decided to make a change. (laughs) And so it's the craziest things that can inspire us and talk to us. Isn't that amazing? You know, it's amazing how many different things can speak to us to make a change. So the next chapter is called The Seven Deadly Motives in Leadership. You know, a lot of people are stuck in jobs they no longer like. And this is whether you're a leader or a follower or anybody. And many people are stuck in jobs they can't do anything about. And they just sort of have to uh, bid their time until, you know, they retire or they find another job. But um, in leadership, it is so toxic for leaders to stay longer than they should. And I like to say that a leader does more damage by staying too long than by leaving too soon. Now, here are what I call the seven deadly motives that I've observed for hanging on to a position after the passion is gone. Power, prestige, position, popularity, pride, personal gain, and of course, paycheck. And you know, at one time or another, I think I experienced all four, all seven of those deadly motives and hanging on to the job uh, for the wrong reasons. So then I go to the next chapter, the passion piranhas that are out to get your heart. There are a lot of things that can take the fun out of your job. And uh, I've got a long list. I won't read them all. But what happens is these are to me like piranhas. In the pressure of your job, they rob you of your passion and you don't have the joy of of your work. It can be everything from uh, prolonged discouragement to opposition to your vision, workaholism, lack of taking vacation, working outside of your gifting, having deep marriage problems, constant financial pressure, and on and on and on. I'll leave some for you to read when you get the book. But the passion piranhas. 
piranhas are out to get your heart. Then my next chapter five is, are you strolling among the walking dead? This is kind of like, it's interesting. There's a resurgence of zombie movies right now. And this would be a zombie, a walking dead. And I've met people. Uh, I remember one time I was speaking somewhere uh, not too long ago. And, and afterwards, I was speaking on this very topic of following your heart and, and leading with passion. And this man came up to me and afterwards and he said, you know, Hans, I have absolutely zero passion for my job. And I said, really? <laughs> Finally, I said, have you been to counseling? The guy was so burned out. He said, yeah, my counselor says I'm severely depressed. The problem is I don't know what to do and I don't know. Nothing excites me. And I thought that's, that's kind of the worst example. But it happens to people sometimes where they are, they're, they're just going through the motions. They're part of what I call the walking dead. Well, let's get on to the positive stuff. So the next two chapters are the two options that you really have, the road to what I call passion recovery. Uh, one option, if you're in this place where you're working and you don't have the passion and you feel like you're among the walking dead and you hate your job, you're not doing what you love and you're not loving what you do, one thing you can do is try to get your groove back. Stay put. Get your groove back, and I have a number of suggestions in this chapter of what you can do to re reignite your passion. Everything from asking your boss to reassign you to asking uh, the people uh, that you work for, can you get a graduate degree, maybe go back to school at night and they'll pay for it. There's lots of things you can do internally to try to get your groove back, even go to counseling if you need to. Um, so I talk about how to do that. It's possible. You know, some people are able to get the groove back. Uh, the second option, Chapter 7, The Road to Passion a Recovery, is to seek a way out as you move toward your heart. And this is, this is when you come to the conclusion you need to bring an ending to what you're doing and move on. And that's what I came to. I have these circles in the book. Uh, the, the, uh, one circle is who you are, and the other circle is your job or your position. And the more overlap there is between who you are and what you do, the more there's passion. I call that the passion zone. And if you just have very little overlap between what your job is and what you love doing, you really need to change. And that's what happened to me. You know, I found out that that the things that I love doing most were like on the outside of my job. I love writing books. I love speaking. I love mentoring. And I really wasn't paid to do any of those things because I was running a big international company. And I decided, you know, I'm going to go toward my passion, toward those things that are drawing me. And I'm going to quit my job and build a new business where I get to do what I love and love what I do every day. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm about three years into doing what I like and liking what I'm doing, including my podcast, The Leadership Answer Man. Number eight, finally, go ahead and take the plunge. And that final chapter is kind of an analogy. When I was a little boy, I used to uh, be so afraid of the high diving board in my swimming pool. And I'd walk out on the edge of that tip of that diving board, and I was just terrified to take the plunge. But eventually I did, and I didn't die, and, you know, no terrible things happened to me. And so I really encourage people, if you're at that place where you're in a miserable job, go ahead, take the plunge. Let me finish by just giving you a quote from Stephen Jobs that I just love. Uh, he's a he's, He was a very passionate leader, not easy to work for, but, man, he lived his passion. And he changed the world. And here's what he said in that book, Stephen Jobs, that was written recently by Walter Isaacson. Uh, your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do the work you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. That's pretty well the message of this little book. Hans, you did a fantastic job of breaking that down and, and putting that into a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. And now we're going to ask this next question, which is going to ask you to take it even a step further. And that's that if the reader could only take away one concept, principle or action item, out of everything you just discussed with us and your entire book, what would you want that to be? I would want it to be take the plunge. People are paralyzed with fear. And they prefer uh, the certainty of, the, of their misery than the misery of uncertainty. 
But I would say take the plunge. You will be glad you did. And on the other side, you will say, man, I should have done it sooner. So if I had one application, I'd be go ahead, take the plunge, jump off that diving board into that thing you really want to do. That, that could have been one giant quote right there because it actually <laughs> leads into uh, my, my next question, which is, do you have a favorite quote from your book? And will you take a second to explain uh, what it means to you? Yeah, one of my favorite quotes is from my mentor when I was in graduate school in Dallas, Texas, Howard Hendricks. And I remember he used to say, men, we were all men who were his students at that time. He says, my greatest fear for you is not that you will fail in life, but that you will succeed at the wrong thing. I love that quote because so many people I find are successful, but they're miserable. You know, they've reached the top of what they thought was the ladder of success only to find it's leaning against the wrong wall. And so I think for me, I love that quote, that we need to follow our hearts and be sure we're really pursuing our passion in our hearts, not just what the people around us think success is. That's fantastic. And Hans, we'll put that in the show notes at the elpodcast.com because I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs that are going to want to go back and, and really get a full grasp of, uh, of what you just said and that quote in itself. So, uh, Hans, now we're on to, uh, and I know you already gave us a book recommendation last time, but we're, we are at our final question. And that's, uh, you know, if there was only one book you could recommend based on the way that it's impacted your life, maybe created a, a lifestyle or a paradigm shift that really helped you move forward, uh, either personally or professionally, what book would you suggest? I'm a book lover. There are so many books, but I'm going to have to go with this book called Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. It was published by Simon & Schuster in 2011. It's a story of his life. It was a piece of the story that changed my life. That's excellent because that's what we're always looking for. It seems like every time we can pick up a book that gives us that one nugget. Uh, matter of fact, this is the whole purpose of the podcast to help uh, that, that entrepreneur and entrepreneur find that next great book that gives them one or multiple you know, life change, you know, those nuggets, those nuggets that you implement, you don't just read them, but you actually read and then implement them. And they completely change the course of the way you do business or the way you are doing things professionally. So I appreciate that book recommendation. And, and Hans, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you, but also get more information on your book, the power of passion in leadership? Okay, The Power of Passion and Leadership, of course, is available on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. It's available in print, ebook and audio and read by me, by the way. I do my own audio book recording. So if you like to listen to books, check it out. You can also find that at audible.com. Best way to reach me is at my website, hanspinzel.com, H-A-N-S-F-I-N-Z-E-L, hanspinzel.com. And my podcast on iTunes is uh, The Leadership Answer Man. So that's the best way to reach me. Perfect. Hans, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this book with us today. Appreciate it, Wade. Thanks for having me on your great show. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information uh, on Hans or his book, The Power of Passion in Leadership, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And if you are an entrepreneur and reading has changed your life personally or professionally, we would like to feature you and your story on our show. So please reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to me specifically, Wade D. Danielson on Twitter. And we're looking to pull uh, some some entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs on that uh, where books have have changed your life and showcase them on the entrepreneurs library. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.